What's going on everybody? Tim from Tierphone Orbital. So the Jawas Junkyard Master Sword. Everybody ready? Let's break as many pots as we can. <laughs> and try to find every single piece of that Triforce. <laughs> because this is a Zelda themed hilt. It's rad, it's a really, really nice hilt. Um, it's, it was a little bit of a challenge to figure out a chassis solution for this because uh, I didn't wanna go with the chassis that Jawas supplies with this hilt. I wanted to do something different. Uh, I wanted to still incorporate that green rupee that ships with the kit as well uh, and that was also a request by the client so anyway we'll get into all of that uh, i'll talk about the hilt a little bit and we'll talk about some of the body modifications and the chassis that i did design for this hilt right so without further ado let's get into fusion and talk about this chassis okay so here is the chassis that i designed for this particular hilt so, as I said, the client really wanted to keep the crystal reveal. It's not a real crystal. It's a, uh, I believe it's a, it's, it's either a resin or, or some sort of um, plastic crystal that comes with the kit from Jawas. So, uh, the client really wanted to keep that crystal in place. So, that's what you see up top here is where uh, I have mounted the crystal and there is a, Neopixel that shines down into the top of that crystal. Now this is, I did not do a full size, like a 50-50 or a 35-35 Neopixel here. I did a 20-20 Neopixel shining down into that, that crystal uh, chamber and it's plenty, plenty bright enough and we'll go over that when we do a demo. And other than that, just some light greebly work around the circumference of the chassis. This is just, like I, I did some embossed stuff like I played around with some more of like organic shapes uh, just to kind of keep it in line with uh, that Zelda theme right I didn't do like tubes or electronics or anything on this so just just a lot of like organic circular flourishes uh, of course I have the uh, Triforce angel wings you know Zelda angel wings here fairy wings I actually Think that's what that might be anyway uh zelda logo uh, we've got a triforce around the front here some rupees uh, and of course the infamous uh, it's dangerous to go alone take this uh, embossed on the side of the chassis as well and these are just flourishes svgs like just regular vine svgs that i uh, embossed on the side of the chassis and then just did like a raised raised emboss essentially right and that's what both of these are on, on each side. There's another Zelda shield, master shield. It's been so long since I played the game, so I don't remember what everything is called, right? So anyway, that's it. Uh, we've got room for a 24 millimeter speaker down here. Battery tray is here. Profi board sits around the back. Now there was not enough room for a kill switch in this particular build, so you are the kill switch. You remove the battery and, and turn it on that way, right? The chassis is removable, right? So the chassis makes a connection to the top of the hilt through just a regular, this, this is just another simple PCB holder slash chassis that I designed. Uh, there's a, a window here that I use to wire up the switch. I did a different switch for this um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And that's it, it's all one self-contained uh, chassis in the upper section here. So we've got our PCB emitter that sits up here and down below, this is our uh, six pin PCB that makes a connection to the chassis, right? So that's it, nice and simple. Uh, let's talk about the hilt, okay? So here it is, this is the Master Sword from Jawas Junkyard. Uh, so Jawas is offering two versions of this. There's a purple one and a blue one. This is obviously the blue rendition of the hilt. Uh, it's hefty. Right, I, I mean, I'm not, there's no way around it. This is a hefty hilt because all of this is solid milled aluminum. So it's super, super top heavy, right? Uh, <laughs> it feels good, but it is a hefty boy, okay? Uh, really, really beautiful hilt other than that. The pommel does unscrew. The grip, when you receive the hilt, the grip does unscrew, but because I did a different switch solution for this particular install, uh, this grip does not unscrew while this momentary switches in here and this is uh, e6000 to the inside of, of this hilt right and i'll talk about that in a second um the the hilt does ship with some really nice green leather so i wrapped that 
Uh, and that's, that's it, right? Nice and easy. Uh, this is the chassis that Jawas ships. Now this is uh, typical of Jawas uh, chassis that he ships with the hilts. It's just a, a straight chassis. Um, I'm just not a fan, not a fan of the wire management that we've got going on in here. It's a little bit confounding to me. Um, so I decided to go with my own design, obviously. Um, I also am not a huge fan of having like a drop-in plunger switch with a magnet. Um, so that's why you, you see this on the back. I mean, obviously you want to have an onboard. So the, to set up this chassis, you would have an onboard tactile switch here with a magnet on top of it. And then the blue switch for the Master Sword, you would glue a magnet on the end of that. And then you just drop it in every time you put your chassis in. Uh, just a little confusing. I'm not, I'm not sure why, uh, you know, the switch that, that was, that, that plunger switch that was shipped with the hilt was threaded as well. Just a little confusing. So rather than just go with this chassis, I designed my own, okay? Uh, and this is it here. A lot smaller. Uh, so our profi board sits here. There is a 24 millimeter speaker. This is from uh, the Smuggler's Outpost. And there is that green rupee. Uh, that I mentioned. This comes with the chassis kit from Jawas and our six rail PCB up top, right? So I actually printed this off in black resin, all right? Then I taped off the sides here and did a pass with some metallic Tamiya spray paint and, and then went back and did a gold buff and rub on those flourishes. So it makes it look really, really, really cool. Uh, that two-tone really makes it pop, I think. So Really, really nice. I like the way that that came out, right? So, to use the hilt, right? So, let's talk about the switch really quick as well. So, this is a momentary switch that I actually made. So, I made this. This is a lit uh, momentary switch that I you can find them on AliExpress. Uh, but I removed the uh, button portion of the switch, right? And created a mount for the Jawas drop-in plunger switch. Now, it was cool that the Jawas plunger was threaded because I was able to thread it into the housing that you then click into the bottom of this uh, momentary switch housing. It sounds confusing, but it actually worked uh, the way that I really wanted it to, and it helps to secure uh, that button in there a, little, a lot better. This is also a lit uh, momentary switch housing. So once you put your battery in, uh, this switch does light up. I feel like this is a way better solution uh, than having a plunger switch with a magnet on it. Uh, I've found that sometimes those can be pretty loose. Uh, they can fly around. If you don't have your tolerances perfect as well, uh, it can be wobbly. Um, so I wanted to try something different. I definitely wanted to have this lit, right? So that's what we did. And luckily for me, the client was okay with that. So to use the hilt, let's do a quick demo. So, uh, spring side is your negative, so you want to take the flat part of your battery and put it in the chassis. There is no kill switch. And there is that green rupee lit. So once you put your battery in, and that's timed as well, so it'll time out after, um, I think I set it to like a minute or something. Um, so, you unscrew the pommel, take your chassis, it doesn't matter which direction you put it in, you just want to slide it in, and then screw your pommel on, and then you're ready to go. So there's that lit switch uh, underneath the plunger switch uh, is lit. This is, a, it's hard to see on camera, but that's actually a blue, um, it's a blue lit momentary switch, right? So let's come down here. We've got a couple of Zelda themed fonts on here. Uh, I think this is from Juan Sid. That's a uh, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy font.
So, so obviously, um, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, Devin Clark is doing a custom run of blades, Master Sword blades for this. Obviously, I don't have that, uh, but you can put a regular one inch blade in this as well. So you just want to like, obviously, as, as we always do, we rest our blade on those PCB pins. There is a set screw on each side, one here and one here. Uh, I'm assuming that that will help secure the Master Sword blade when it is in. So those two holes that I mentioned, uh, those are very, very small holes. They're, they almost look like M1, uh, like hex grub screw holes. I don't have anything that small, and unfortunately, I didn't see any of those in the hardware kit that came from Jawa. So I don't know if that's something that Devin is going to ship, like the hardware is going to ship with the blade or not. Uh, I also didn't want to pop a hole in this, um, a bigger hole, um, just in case they needed to be that size for this blade that Devin is doing a run for. So I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to do a demo with the blade, but it's not secure in here. So I don't want to like flip it around too much, right? So, fortunately, I don't want to like lose the blade. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, I can't really swing the blade around too much because I don't want to lose it, obviously, right here. Let's just do this. Twist to activate and deactivate is all on. This is a single button setup profi, so all it's a setup with with FETs uh, single button config. So that's how you have to operate it. So yeah, and there's that lit switch. I don't know if you can see if it's blue or not in there, but so that's it. Nice and easy. Um, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to have a better switch option for this particular install. I'm just not ever a fan of like drop-in plunger switches. Um, sometimes it's a necessity, you have to do it that way. Uh, but whenever I can avoid that, I like to do that, right? So I'm really happy with the way the chassis came out too. I, I, it's the first time I've done like a or, more organic looking chassis without like all the greeblies and, and, and electronic com components. And I, you know, I didn't put NeoPixels all over this either. I, I feel like it was a little, a little more of a classy chassis, right? Classy chassis. I like the sound of that. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, to the client, thank you very much for trusting me with your install. Uh, to everybody watching, thank you very much for the support. And with that being said, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. May the force be with you, always.